Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. We are just moments away from a press conference with Governor Josh Green. Uh, he is back on island as of late last night. He will be joined by Mayor Richard Bisson from Maui all to recount the disaster in Lahaina of the town leveled by a fire that struck a late Tuesday. Now, we will also be hearing from Major General Kenneth Hara and U.S. Senator Brian Schatz, who will be on island here as well. Uh, we have crews over there. We're going to break into that as soon as that team of leadership is ready. We did hear from President Biden today, weighing in on the scope of the disaster in Lahaina, affecting the Maui County and really statewide as our hearts are with them. Let's hear what President Biden had to say about the federal help available. I, uh, we have just approved a major disaster declaration of, for Hawaii, which will get aid into the hands of the people desperate and desperately needing help now. They've lost, uh, anyone who's lost a loved one whose home has been damaged or destroyed is going to get help immediately. And I've directed that we assert support to these brave firefighters and first responders and emergency personnel working around the clock there, risking their lives. And so much going on on the Valley Isle. There are still many people waiting to connect with loved ones, friends, and family that they have not been able to locate. They may be fine, but there's such a lack of communication and a lack of telecommunication from the west side. So a family assistance center has been open in Kahului for family members who are looking for information about loved ones who are unaccounted for and others who may be affected by those wildfires. This center is located at 275 Uhu Street, UHU Street. It's open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. today and Friday. Hours after Friday have not been set yet, but they'll keep us updated. Also, the Maui Emergency Management Agency will be passing out forms that can be filled out that can help you in the process of locating unaccounted family members. Again, people trying to locate loved ones who may be impacted by the fires can also call the American Red Cross hotline at 1-800-733-2767. And late last night, I also interviewed a young lady on Maui who began a grassroots effort that became a web uh, public access web shared Google Doc. We'll have links on that on our website as well. And this is just a, a public's uh, grassroots way of listing people still unaccounted for and connecting them with others. There's links to that as well. Again, that is not uh, by an official agency, but is a community driven effort to list. Hey, I really want to find you. Here's where people have been identified as either located in shelters or otherwise seen. The latest from the Maui fire disaster, more than a thousand structures have been destroyed. That number keeps going up. Good news, the Lahaina fire 80% contained as of this morning and uh, there has been uh, at least some effort uh, toward that, some results toward that. Now the Pulehu fire, that's the one Mauka of Kihei, that's elsewhere. That's 70% contained as of this morning. They're using heavy equipment to create fire breaks throughout the night to try to get a handle on that fire. Sadly, 17 more deaths added to the death toll today. Uh, it's, it's a growing tragedy of epic proportions. And now we're ready to hear from Governor Josh Green back on island over on Maui, the mayor and others. I'd like to bring up Governor Josh Green. Aloha, friends. Uh, first of all, mahalo for welcoming us to Maui. And mahalo, Mayor, uh, for being here for us. Uh, it's a heartbreaking day, without a doubt. What we've seen today has been uh, catastrophic. But we tell you there is going to be a team effort to bring our state back. What we saw was the utter devastation of Lahaina. We walked uh, from end to end today as a team, uh, Mayor Bisson for the county, Senator Schatz at the federal level, and myself, plus all of our teams. And what we saw was likely the largest natural disaster in Hawaii state history. You'll recall in 1960, we had uh, one year into statehood, a tsunami that hit and took 61 lives uh, on the big island. We are seeing loss of life here. As you know, uh, the number has been rising and we will continue to see loss of life 
but we have extraordinary professionals working on this job. We also have seen many hundreds of homes destroyed, and that's going to take a great deal of time to recover from. But that's why we come together. We come together to give comfort to people, and like I said, we will prevail. But we come together now to talk about the specifics of resources. Uh, this morning at 12:10 uh, a.m., my team and I submitted uh, the proposal to the federal government uh, for presidential disaster declaration. And exactly six hours later, we were honored to receive in the affirmative that the federal government will be supporting our full recovery, which means that there will be grants for individuals from FEMA, there will be support for rental uh, aid, there will be support for small businesses, and this is just a small piece of what's going to be necessary. But the financial aspects of the recovery will help blunt the loss of life because all of us will have a loved one here on Maui that we know of that lost a house, that lost a friend. We talked to many people today, not just at the shelter, which was something to behold, and we appreciate all the volunteers like we appreciate the incredible work of the firefighters and police, but we talked to an old gentleman who hadn't seen anything like this uh, ever in his life, a wildfire that took a whole city. His neighbors have all lost their homes. His home was intact, but he was in tears. This is a gentleman that doesn't cry easily. We saw young men on bicycles riding through Lahaina. They also uh, had much loss to share. They lost their houses, and they don't know where to turn. So what we're telling you is we will rebuild. Today you're going to hear from not just me as governor, but you're going to see what Senator Schatz will be able to begin working on and proposing for our aid. Also, we have experts from FEMA, of course, our local leadership, our state senator, and mayor. But let me say this, a couple things. We are going to need to house thousands of people. It's our intent to initially seek 2,000 rooms so that we can get housing for people. That will mean reaching out to all of our hotels and those in the community. We'll ask people to rent those extra rooms or their ADUs or the Ohana that they have in their property. We will create a program so that that's available. It will be deeply subsidized, in my opinion, to make sure that for the many months that people need to find a home, they can have a home here. We will have to make the hotels whole as we do this. They are part of our economy and our community. We're also going to call to action for people across the state. If you have additional space in your home, if you have the capacity to take someone in from West Maui, please do. We'll find a way to connect you. Please consider bringing those people into your lives, especially if you have a space that you can otherwise rent. The state will find resources because the federal government will be in full support. President Biden spoke to me directly and said that they will be here with us all the way. We'll take questions at the end, but I know there are several experts here that are going to address you, and we understand you're hungry for information. Let me just say this up front. We respect that. We know how important it is that you do your jobs, but we're just about 48 hours in and there's tragedy on the roadside. There's tragedy in the homes in Lahaina, and we're trying to be very careful to respect the dignity of people who have had such loss. So if we've been at any time more difficult to communicate, it's because we're trying to also respect what they've gone through. We'll get you a lot of information as we go forward. So I'll pause there and give it back to Makana. Mahalo, Mayor. At this time, I'd like to welcome up Maui County, County Mayor Richard Bissett. Thank you, Hello, my kako. In an event like this, I think we all understand, goes through several phases. Uh, we have been in the phase now of fighting fires and saving lives. I uh, appreciate the patience the media has had with us, allowing us to go through that phase. Uh, soon we'll be in the recovery rebuilding phase, as the governor has spoken to. Uh, we know that's going to be a long process. I really want to speak to our citizens, our residents, our visitors, our businesses who have suffered tremendous loss and probably inconsolable grief. Um, I think for us, the message is we're going to try our very best to identify those that have perished uh, so that the families can have that closure and can have that understanding. We're also going to try and connect our families with those who are in our shelters. Um, as you understand, this was an emergency. People left without uh, taking anything with them. In most cases, they had no choice. 
Um, so now we're at that phase where we want to make sure those that are in our community, whether they're at a hotel or at a shelter or staying with a family or friend, uh, that we can try and, and match them back with their families. Uh, a lot of work being done by all the good people here to make that happen. Um, and again, uh, as the governor spoke to it, we will, we will rebuild, and that's really uh, what we have no choice but to do. Until you see the devastation uh, that we all witnessed, uh, maybe through photographs before this morning, but in person today, um, it's difficult to describe. Uh, but there are lots of people that will need a lot of help. And, and our goal as government is to provide that help to people. Um, I did want to also speak to the folks who did not, whose homes were not damaged. And I know the question on your mind is, when can I get back to my home? Just as soon as we can try to provide um, the certainty that we have recovered those that have perished. And that's really our, our goal right now. We're hoping to find people that um, might just be injured. Uh, a lot of time has passed since the incident, so we're still uh, in that phase. But please allow us to complete this process before we allow people back into the homes. There's no power, there's no water uh, back on, on the west side either. Uh, so those are both things we're trying to restore as well. Uh, we also want to make sure we can provide enough uh, shelter space, uh, space at our shelters for folks. We're, we're kind of at the limits in some of the central Maui ones, and we'll have to be creative with our team uh, after this to try to get more uh, for folks out on the west side. So we're very cognizant of the main things that people want to know. Where's my family member? When can I move back? Uh, to my home and, and what's the long-term plan. I mostly, however, want to thank all the, uh, the partners, the allies that we have in our federal government, our state government, our fellow county government uh, support, and of course, our public. Uh, your patience, uh, your vigilance, uh, we continue to ask for it. Thank you. Hello, Mayor. I'd now like to bring up U.S. Representative Brian Schatz. Uh, Senator. Senator. It's fine, it's fine. U.S. Senator Brian Schatz. No, I, I lost that race. Um, <laughs> um, aloha, everybody. Um, I just have a couple of things to say. First of all, we are unified um, from the federal uh, to the state to the county government and especially including the community. We were fortunate enough to be in the emergency operating center and I've been in a lot of EOCs um, and I have never seen uh, such an extraordinary group of individuals who are professionally and personally dedicated to disaster response and of course recovery and so many people have so many personal relationships that they're kind of managing having to be a first responder but also worry about their own families and so we all want to thank them but Josh got a call from the president. I just got a call from the vice president. Leader Schumer called and assured me that he was going to do everything he could in terms of a disaster supplemental funding bill. And one of the best pieces of news, which was fortuitous this week, is that Bob Fenton from Region 9, who has been a longtime friend of Hawaii uh, through FEMA, through wildfire, other wildfires, through volcanic eruptions, through floods, and tropical storms is here and is one of the most knowledgeable people on disaster response and recovery that you could possibly get. And he's here physically with us, walked Front Street, has done all of it, and is going to stay for the duration, even as um, the FEMA administrator, I think, arrives uh, tomorrow evening. So we are united. Uh, we are not underestimating the task in front of us in the next couple of days and couple of weeks, but also a couple of years. This is going to be a long period of recovery, but we will rebuild. Mahalo, Senator Brian Schatz. At this time, I'd like to bring up Major General Ken Hara. Uh, good afternoon and aloha. I'd, li I'd like to start off again by offering my condolences <clears throat> and prayers to everyone from Maui to include the, the visitors. It was just extremely um, saddening to see all the destruction there. But you know, I was fortunate to be able to see it firsthand and now realize the amount of support that we're going to require from the federal, state, county, and, and the private. And, and I was talking to Governor Green and said this has got to be an all-of-nation approach. Um, 
because of what I saw, we'll be activating uh, what we call the Joint Task Force 5-0. So that's a dual status commander. I'll be appointing Brigadier General Stephen Logan, who's currently my Deputy Adjutant General. He will be the dual status commander, so he'll have the authority to command both uh, active duty and National Guard forces. Um, I've been in close contact with Admiral Aquilino, who's the commander of U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, and General um, Charles Flynn, who's the commander of the U.S. Army Pacific, and they have said they will provide the state whatever military resources we need uh, for response and recovery. Uh, I, I did ask, and we did formally request several re, re, um, capabilities and resources from FEMA and from, from the federal government. I'll, I'll allow Administrator uh, Fenton to, to go into the details of what he is, he's uh, approved, but it, it's going to take a long time, as the mayor and both the governor alluded to, there's so much destruction, it's going to take time to, to rebuild, and we're going to need that all-of-nation approach that I talked about. Thank you. Mahalo, at this time, we'd like to bring up Robert Fenton, Region 9, FEMA Administrator. Appreciate it. Uh, and uh, first, uh, you know, our condolences and prayers with those that have lost friends and loved ones uh, during this event. Uh, we want to be with you, uh, not only uh, now, but through the recovery in the years to come. Uh, also, a uh, message of safety. Make sure you continue to heed the warnings of local officials. Don't wait, uh, listen to them and uh, heed their warnings. Uh, as uh, all the speakers before me talked about is uh, unity of effort. Uh, I just like to say one team, one fight, uh, but this is really gonna take a whole community effort. It's just not government at the federal, state, local level. It's business, private sector, nonprofits, the citizens of Maui all come together to work together to help recover. Uh, the devastation, uh, that I saw today is significant. I've been on many fires in my career. I've been in FEMA for 26 years, been to the biggest fires in the country, and uh, the downtown area is significantly damaged uh, and a lot of lost structures down there. Um, some of the programs that we will bring um, and that are important mm -hmm. here is the ability to provide direct federal assistance. What does that mean? That means I have the authority under the president to task other federal agencies to provide support to Maui and the state of Hawaii. And some of those missions, I'm sure, are gonna be in the debris removal area, household hazardous waste that usually US EPA does for us, the Corps of Engineers usually removes debris for us, uh, and many other missions to include potentially generator missions, mass care, commodities, uh, and uh, also bringing in some search and rescue teams that help with cadaver dogs to look for hum human moraines, and they're on the way in right now. Uh, both from California and Washington, and uh, we'll integrate them and support the great fire department you have here. Um, our individual assistance program is a key program for individuals. For those that are survivors who either lost loved ones or uh, you can't get back to your house or uh, you think you've been impacted by this storm, uh, go ahead and uh, phone the 1-800 320-6632 FEMA number. Again, that is 1-800-320-6632. You could also go to disasterassistance.gov. And FEMA assistance can uh, provide direct grants to those individuals to assist them with home repair uh, or replacement and certain uninsured essential personnel property losses. So keep any receipts you incur uh, during this time. Also, they'll automatically refer you to small business. As we talked about, there's a lot of damage to the businesses and the Small Business Association will be not only working with businesses, but individuals. And uh, we encourage uh, all the survivors of Maui, Maui County as they register for FEMA to also begin to reach out to uh, your insurance companies. Start that process uh, simultaneously as you start the individual assistance process. In addition to that individual assistance program, we could provide support um, for public entities and a certain essential nonprofits. Uh, there's been a lot of significant damage to public buildings down there, hospitals, those kind of things. And we could help with the rebuilding of those. Not only do we want to rebuild them, but we want to rebuild them better, more resilient. Uh, we want to make sure they're hardened uh, against future threats, whether it be fires, uh, hurricanes, uh, tsunamis, or other events. And uh, 
Uh, and then our last program is our mitigation program. 15% uh, of all the funding we spend here will be put aside to help with some of those future projects. So as we redesign and look at, uh, you know, what does the future hold? How do we help get there? Uh, those funds can be drawn on along with other federal agencies. And we'll make sure we have a long-term recovery coordinator here to help Maui, uh, the state of Hawaii, to uh, to uh, help rebuild uh, those areas impacted. With that, uh, I appreciate the opportunity today uh, to be here and to be able to talk to uh, everyone here. And please start uh, by starting that process to register for individual assistance uh, at disasterassistance.gov and 1-800-320-6632. Thank you. We'd now like to bring up Senator Lynn DeCoit. Aloha mai kakou. Um, I'll make this really fast. Um, as you know, we have tried to bring in every resource that we have, that we can. Um, while trying to do this, notice that our heartfelt condolences, our prayers, our love to Johanna, your family goes out. Um, as our phones have been filled very heavily, um, not just here in Maui, um, as we all went into the center this morning, um, I can tell you that you guys have a team on the ground that is working hard, fast, and swift. Um, FEMA here, Governor has done everything in his part as well as our congressional delegation, um, the military. Um, I can tell you that um, working through Honolulu at the convention center as we start to move people out and receiving people on the other end through HTA, Director Tokioka has been a huge support and his team. Um, this is not just about tourism here, it's about the residents also as we help to assist them. Um, we've heard the outreach. Um, I ask um, that for those of you who can help each other, please help each other in time of need. We know that there's a lot of emotional um, trauma going on. Um, I want to just thank everybody that has supported. We have much funds, um, supplies coming in, the groups, the businesses that have been affected. These are the businesses that are standing there strong. Across the world, um, we are getting calls just to help with housing. Um, funds and it is just unbelievable but our priority here is Maui at this time it's the people of Maui um, it's to support the mayor um, I do want to iterate you know social media has killed us a lot a lot of the information going out has been misinformation which is why the team from uh, governor down to military has pushed clarification to the mayor's office um, please um, those numbers and stuff that might come out it comes to the mayor's office. We're here to support the county, the mayor, his team on the ground, and you know, mahalo for being here, mahalo for helping us get the word out, and God bless our families. Take care. Mahalo, Senator DeCoit. I'd like to now bring up Fire Chief Brad Ventura. Aloha, good afternoon. My name is Brad Ventura, Fire Chief from Maui County. I uh, first want to start by giving our deepest condolences to all those affected by this incident. Um, it's affected a lot of us personally, uh, members of our community, our families, and our department. So our hearts go out to all of them. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of background of how the day unfolded Tuesday. Um, our firefighters are faced with multiple large wildfires beginning just after midnight Tuesday morning. These firefighters are compounded by extreme winds that we're all aware of. The first fire up in Upper Makawa burned about 675 acres. By 11 o'clock in the morning, that's when the Lahaina fire began. It was fueled by gusts up to 60 miles an hour. Um, some even reported up to 80 miles an hour, but we saw up to 60 miles an hour in the localized area. Uh, we redirected resources from many parts of the island to respond to the Lahaina area. And around noon, an additional fire started in Kula, um, and that spurred evacuations of um, Kula Lani Circle, Kula Manu in that um, afternoon, and resources were also directed up there. Around 6 p.m., a fourth wildfire started that afternoon on Pulehu Road down in the Central Valley. Uh, that burned several hundred acres, and again, resources were had to be directed, and um, decisions had to be made to triage what was um, most important at the time. So that fire was left with less resources. Um, as of yesterday, it burned 675. I'm sorry, not that fire. Um, that fire was several hundred acres. I don't have a number on that one yet. 
Um, what we want to share with the community is that none of the fires are 100% contained right now and there's still active fire in all of those areas that I've discussed. Um, additionally, we've had many small fires um, in between these large fires and um, with the current weather pattern that we're facing, we still have the potential for um, you know, rapid fire behavior. And so we just wanna make, pe make sure people stay out of the area, stay diligent. If they see um, smoke and flames, please call 911. Um, we've stood up our incident management team to manage um, our resources within our department that are focused mostly on containing all of these emergencies right now and stopping them from growing. Um, our department has received both state and federal support and resources that are on the way, some landing right now. And um, what we really want to share with the community is uh, part of the reason we need them to stay out is because it's still very very hazardous in the burn areas things are falling every minute around us and there have been some people that have been hurt by just falling telephone poles and such so we need to make sure the area is safe before anybody can return to that uh, space um, that's all the comments I have for now thank you well hello finally we'd like to bring up Police Chief John Pelletier. <clears throat> Thank you. Our deepest condolences, and it can't be stated enough because we don't know how many people we have dead. When this is all said and done, we just don't know. I have to say thank you to the incredible work of the men and women of the Maui Police Department that day in and day out do an incredible job. I have call takers that are answering calls knowing that on the other end we don't have the answers for their loved ones. And I've got officers that are doing everything they can to stand with our firefighters to make sure that this is the safest community possible because right now we have a scar on the face of Maui that will be here for a very long time. We know that scars uh, heal in time, but they always remain. We need three things from the community right now. We need your patience, we need your prayers, and we need your perseverance. Understand this. Lahaina Town is hollowed sacred ground right now because our EV are in that ground. We have to get them out. We will get them out as fast as we can, but I need your patience while we do this. I know you need to get out there. I know, I know that you guys don't have some of the supplies, you don't have power, but we have to respect the fact that we've got loved ones in that earth and we've got to do the right thing and get them out the right way. That's going to take time. I'll get the road open as fast as I can, but I have to do it safely. As we move forward, I need you to know this. This community is unlike any other. This is one team, one fight. We do have the state, the local, the federal resources here. That flag is red, white, and blue. That Fred flag is red, white, and blue. All of us, all of us bleed red. We are here to be with you in this time of need. We are Maui strong. We will get through this. We will be better. We will make this the safest, best community possible. And we need you to understand right now, we need your help more than ever. God bless you. God bless Maui. God bless Hawaii. Mahalo Nui. At this time, um, we'd like to entertain questions from the media present. I'd like to ask for your respectful kokua as we go through that process. I'm gonna limit initially to one question per media outlet. Please raise your hand, please wait for me to call upon you, at which time I'd like to ask you to please state your name and your news organization. Then you may ask the question and then we will have the team uh, respond accordingly. I will start here. Hi, I'm Stuart Yurton with Civil Beat. Um, I have a question, how much and how long both for public and private um, repair and uh, recovery. And when I say this, I mean, how much money are you thinking it's gonna take both for the private side and public infrastructure, and how long do you expect this to take? So, thank you, Stuart, it's a very good question. Uh, the question, if you couldn't hear it, is how long and what's the size of this recovery? It will take time to know the full extent uh, but it will be in the billions of dollars, without a doubt. Uh, we're first focused on lives lost. That's why we are so heartbroken and why we have to respect what the chief of police had to say. Uh, there will be active recovery 
over the coming days and weeks of, of the bones of those who have been lost. Uh, so it will take time. Uh, to give perspective, uh, it is going to take many years to rebuild Lahaina. When you see the full, uh, the full extent of the destruction of Lahaina, it will shock you. It does appear like a bomb and fire went off, if I may. And all of those buildings virtually are going to have to be rebuilt. It will be a new Lahaina that Maui builds in its own image, with its own values. But it's going to be billions of dollars. Uh, the good news that we had today was we are so coordinated. the approval from the president to bring those resources in. I think what I'll do is I will ask Bob to kind of give you an idea of how, in general, can't speak yet to how fast the dollars will come to our residents, but in general, what happens when FEMA gets that kind of de uh, designation? Uh, we have a disaster relief fund <clears throat> that we draw funding on that's appropriated annually, uh, and there's also supplementals to it. Uh, and so in these disasters, the grants to individuals could happen pretty quickly. Um, the homes are uh, destroyed. We do already have mapping uh, of uh, from the air. We've already processed it against there. So start the call in and we can actually get inspectors to use some of that visual imagery to validate the damages to someone's house. Uh, what we'll do is set up recovery centers uh, with the uh, Maui uh, in locations over time so that as individuals have questions and want to do case management, they can come in there. But that funding through there not only could provide rental assistance, but repair costs for your house and, and uh, other assistance if you're a, um, if it's your primary property um, and after rental assistance, uh, I mean after uh, insurance, uh, it's a direct grant. Uh, basically, uh, you know, we send it into your account, there's no cost share, uh, it could be done fairly quickly. And you'll see numbers come up, they'll start happening pretty quickly. Probably over the next week, you'll see dollars going out on the street pretty quickly. We'll bring in uh, individuals that will go out, and for those that maybe can't register or have difficulty registering over the internet, we will go ahead and uh, try to come to you. We have people who go out to the field with palm pads, they'll look for you, uh, we'll go to the shelters, we'll go to their locations, and try to help them. As far as public assistance, it's primary of reimbursement, and so as the county and the state spend funds, we reimburse those costs. That also could happen pretty quickly. The direct federal assistance I talked about is us doing the work. So when we talk about the debris mission, which may be a very large mission there, uh, and I've done them in uh, California before for big fires like this, where I've seen structures on this neighbor on uh, this magnitude destroyed, it's taken us a month to a year to finish the debris mission, just to give you an idea, uh, depending on the number of structures, the amount of concrete that's been removed, the number of structures that need to come down. And those missions have cost in the past anywhere from hundreds of millions of dollars to a billion dollars, depending on how much landfill space you have, where do we recycle stuff at, do we have to take it off island, there, you know, there's all these questions that we got to start working through right now. Um, that's directly the federal government doing it. Um, and we're going to do it in support, in coordination of the county uh, and the state. So, um, and then what we'll do is our mitigation funding is as we, uh, Identify projects we provide grants that people can apply for, uh, public entities uh, can apply for for those grants over time, and that'll probably really happen a year to 18 months down the, the timeline once you really start identifying uh, what the master plan is, how you're rebuilding, what do we need to mitigate. So a lot of our funding could be directly given, especially to individuals. That's why I say start with that registration process. Uh, go to disasterassistance.gov, download the FEMA app, go to the 1-800 number and start that. Uh, it can be pretty quickly to get money in your pocket, especially if you need money to cover costs you're expending, especially if you need some rental assistance. And then we're gonna figure out through case management uh, what other types of forms of programs we need to bring in here. There may be unique programs that meet your needs that we need to either bring that we used before or new ones we need to develop that's specific to the uniqueness and culture out here in Maui. Right. I'm gonna add, um, uh, Take energy, for example. Uh, the poles, in some cases, have been incinerated. Uh, they're down. It's going to take, Hiko, a lot of time. We're talking about more than just days. We're talking about weeks to months, in some cases, to get energy fully restored. In the interim, of course, we're going to do all that we can to get people generators. We're going to do all that we can to find other places for people to live. But it's not going to just be a couple days. 
uh, like in a terrible rainstorm when power gets restored. Uh, so, so those are some of the challenges. Also speaking to resources, uh, there has been a discussion. We haven't made a final decision yet about this, uh, but with the leadership of the House uh, and the Senate locally, we may very well need to come into a special session to decide on uh, a number, a number of uh, dollars to appropriate specifically to Maui to support the people, to help them with housing, to help them with recovery. Uh, you do recall that when we had flooding uh, in the past, we appropriated over $100 million to directly support our people. And that's why we have rainy day funds. Uh, the legislature this year set aside, this year alone, set aside $500 million, and there was already a billion dollars of resource that was for emergency. This is the greatest emergency we've seen in decades. Hello, next. We'll go here. Um, Thomas Hayes on the civil debate um, for the governor. Uh, yesterday, Lieutenant Governor Luke said, uh, quote, we never anticipated in this state that a hurricane which did not make impact on our islands will cause this type of wildfires. Uh, a similar phenomenon occurred in, during Hurricane Lane in 2018, um, and experts have been warning of the increasing dangers of wildfires in Hawaii for a number of years. Uh, my question is, after Hurricane Lane, did the state make any changes, or did it prepare for this kind of scenario uh, going into the future from there. We've never experienced a wildfire that affected a city like this before, so this is something that we have not experienced before. Uh, we have experienced wildfires across the state, uh, and they've been tragic, but usually tragic in open space. This was, of course, a shock to see a hurricane and its winds and the trade winds caused collateral damage, which was the spread of fire. Uh, I think that we're seeing this for the first time in many different parts of the world, where we're seeing fires from California to Colorado. I would comment that I've been contacted by several governors across the country to share their experiences. It is difficult now in a time where global warming is combined with strengthening storms and drought. That is difficult for us. I think that the tragedy would have been very difficult to anticipate, especially as it came in the night with high winds. But that does not mean that we won't do everything we can in the future to stop this. Uh, our administration, which is just six months in, has begun to assess all of our safety, and this has been the hardest uh, experience to factor into that. I do think that as we rebuild, we'll have to take into consideration a lot more fire safety. Uh, we are short on a lot of resources across the state, and that means we're short on helicopters and we're short on personnel. It's difficult to find enough resources to pay firefighters and police adequately to get them into the discipline. So it's always a challenge in the islands. Uh, but this is going to be a priority. Uh, climate change is here, and it's affecting the islands, and I think that's what you're seeing uh, with this fire. Okay, just one second. We love our civil beat, but we got a twofer in there, so let's not hana <laughs> hold that. Um, if you are from a media outlet, I'd like to you guys to just pair up with your partner. We've got multiple people here taking one question per outlet. So mahalo nui. I'm actually going to change it up. We did get a question in from Honolulu Star Advertisers Dan Nakaso for the mayor and police chief. Were mandatory evacuation orders ever issued for Lahaina? If not, why not? Were civil defense sirens considered as a way to warn residents and tourists of the fire? Come on. Um, yes, mandatory evacuations did take place uh, in on the west side for those affected areas. So it wasn't, uh, for example, Napili or Kapalua, uh, but certainly for uh, Lahaina. You know, the questions, sirens, different things in there. We, we, we have tone alerts that go out. Uh, we, we know that there's things that we can do to be preventative. How many times have we heard have two weeks of supply if you hear of a hurricane? The only thing I would say to the person asking the question is, we've heard that for how long? Do we all have two weeks of supply? Probably not. And so I, I say that because nobody saw this coming. And if we did, we wouldn't have this situation, but this is a tragedy. And so we do everything we can to mitigate the threats when they come, but this was not one of those, if it's predictable, it's preventable. Nobody saw this coming, period. 
Mahalo, I'm going to go this side of the room, right back there. You, yes. Hi uh, there, uh, Governor, fellow dignitaries, uh, Justin Michaels from the Weather Channel. Uh, and you may have covered this if you have, uh, I apologize. Is there a handle yet on how many people are still missing at this hour? He's going to defer that to me, I sure. guess. Sure, whomever. So, uh, honestly, we don't know. And, and here's the challenge. There's no power. There's no internet. There's no radio coverage. Our pack sets, we're having a hard time getting through on that. The fire burned two fires or three fires ago, fiber optic cables, which we're in the process on this budget to start replacing some of those. And so now you compound some of that. And so when we're speaking to our officers over there, we're actually having them to get to a certain area so we can get on a sat phone as we're recovering. So I would say that we've got approximately, and this is a very fluid number, but let's say there's a, a, a thousand missing people. Doesn't mean that's how many that we have uh, that, have, that have passed. I'm not saying that number at all, but because we can't contact them and because they can't necessarily come uh, into the greater valley as quickly or as much as we'd like because they're actually in shelter uh, until we get some of those basic things set up. Uh, we're not going to have that number, but the nice, you know, solution to that is we have a, uh, a family assistance center set up. And so anybody that's missing anybody, we would direct you there. We'll make sure that you have that information provided. People can go there and give uh, the information of those that they're, they're seeking to find. And as we are able to reunify, we will. And, and if we have to make certain notifications from there, we, we will do that as well. I am going to jump here. Wendy, I'm sure Pacific Media Group in Maui now. I'm just wondering if you could, I know you guys have done reconnaissance, maybe the fire department or the mayor can answer this. Um, walk us through Front Street, Lahaina, what specific neighborhoods are gone? Was it sporadic? Was it every other house? Was it the entire area? Can you give us a better idea of what we're looking at? It's all gone. What from poor mana, from poor mana to the chart house. How about going up Malta, like Lahaina Luna Road? How far? The cutoff was uh, the area. Well, what we could see today was the highway. Uh, so the winds look like they came from Malka down to Makai. Some of the parts were open, but let's say Keave Street. In that area, there was one structure that was is is irreparable. Uh, the, the harm there, but others were intact. But the older neighborhood, from the the line on the road, from the road down to Front Street, everything there is is destroyed. What about the Lahaina Luna area? That's I, got, I got a Makana ask you who, who she picks up. So are, you, wait, are you together as a follow-up? No, just to follow, because I'm not clear Okay, can you, you please identify yourself? Yeah, it's Paul Aker with Maui Alert. All right. So, so those houses in that subdivision by the bypass, how much of that is gone as well? So you're referring to the Lahaina Luna Road neighborhood. Correct. So um, the fire did start above that and some of the first homes they caught on fire were in that neighborhood. And from those upper houses, it did go into the Kahoma area, and, and it also extended to Wahikuli, which is um, above the highway, closer to the fire station. That kind of answers your question. Any other, before we let you go, any other specific questions related to this? Any piggyback questions? Go ahead. Uh, Daryl Huff from Hawaii News Now. Um, in this regard, um, the wildly different uh, death estimates that have been given of uh, 6, 36, um, I didn't know where we are today. Can we please get a confirmed death number that you do know? And number two, where are the maps and can people see these maps that they've used to identify the structures? Because we've also had widely disparate estimates of how many structures have been damaged. So, you know, the public is concerned because one day they hear 271 structures. The next day, there's public statements to thousands of structures. Um, so what data do you have that's firm, and what is the process you're going to go through, other than trying to find all the missing people and decide if they're dead? OK, there's, there's a lot there that you just kind of threw on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, hey, let me back this up. So real quick, 53 right now is confirmed. If 
the mayor or myself do not give you that number, it's not accurate. There's a lot of people that are in a rush to get news fast. I get it, totally get it, sensational. You want it faster, you want it right. We're gonna do it right. We're gonna take our time, we're gonna do it right. We'll get you the aerial maps when we can. When the mayor said it's all gone, it's all gone. It's all gone. It's gone. So, do I know exactly how many buildings? We're, we'll get that. But we're gonna get it right, we're gonna get it in time. And so, I wanna jump over the chief, no, I wanna jump over the chief. If you just wanna say, the, the reason the number is varied is somebody would say, how many residences are gone? Well, if you got a condominium or an apartment building that has 20 units, is that a structure or is that 20 units? You decide how you wanna count that. In this case, it doesn't matter because the whole thing is gone. As a store, we're gonna count that as a structure, a home is a residence, and we just wanna call everything structures. So it really depends on the way you phrase the question. That's the answer you're gonna get. But the easy part is I'm telling you, none of it's there. Okay. It's all burnt to the ground. I absolutely understand that. People that we're talking to out in the community are trying to discern for themselves their own personal loss. Understood. And earlier, I think someone described these maps. And I think that they would be very helpful to people to see the map. They know whether their relative lived next to a condo or in a condo or down the street. But let's see the map. You know, and then maybe that would help you because people will call and say, I know grandma was in that map. I think you should look at her house. that public information has not been coming in such a way that it can help the people help you. Thank you, Daryl. Go ahead. Uh, I want to just clarify. Uh, Sorry, name and organization. Paula Ramon ASB. I want to clarify. 53 people died in La Jaina's fire only um, so far. I know the number would probably rise. And also, do you have an estimate how many, how much, how many people are still trapped in there? So 53 confirmed in the in the Lahaina town, the greater Lahaina town that we're referring to. So far, we've recovered 53 confirmed. I do not know, and that's the issue. And so, because of the assistance of FEMA, we've got some of the professionals coming in that have done these things in the past. Some of the equipment, because realize this. Right now, we've got uh, Maui Search and Rescue. We got the police department. We got some folks from the National Guard. My cops answer calls for service. They go chase bad guys. They go build cases. We don't normally, we don't normally, it's a crisis, I understand that, go into buildings and pull out, you know, some of the bodies. So we got to do it as safely and as possible as we can. So we know at this point we're going to need to do that. But we've got to do it slow and methodical because we've got to make sure that we respect everything and we, and we bring everybody to, to the resting place the right way. And so therein lies part of the issue. So. It's 53, it is rising. I do not know what the final number is gonna be. Um, and, and, and it's gonna be horrible and tragic when we get that number. Because every one of those, it's not, it's not 53. It's 53 families, friends, it's a community. And so we, the, the amount of loss is, is incredible. And, and it's gonna be devastating. I'm gonna go right back here in this corner. Mm -hmm. Bridget DeMonte, KHON. This question is for Mayor Bisson. Uh, Mayor, quite a few Maui residents and visitors, particularly the ones that have been sleeping on their car on the entrance to Lahaina, uh, they have said that this disaster response has been chaotic and they're frustrated with what they say is lack of direction and lack of communication. I think they just want to hear from you. What is your message to them? We've opened several shelters. We've had to close some of them because of the fire that um, we didn't anticipate, for example, the Lahaina Civic Center. Uh, but what I'll say to people in their cars is they have a choice uh, to come to the shelters or not to come to the shelters. Uh, some people are waiting because they think the road's gonna open right away and they think the power's gonna come back on and the water's gonna come back. Most of the people have no idea what happened to Lahaina Town. So they think this is one of those situations where we'll wait it out for a couple hours, like a traffic jam. I think once they find out what, what we all know now, uh, they will come to the shelters. So I don't know if it's a lack of communication or if it's a, a personal decision that people make to wait it out. Uh, because we do have shelters that we've made available. And on the first night, there was 2,100 people there. 
So at least 2,100 people found, found the communication to be adequate to show up. So the folks that didn't come, I'm, I'm going to say it was more a result of a personal choice. Even people who come to the shelters don't come inside. They stay in their cars in the parking lot. Again, a personal choice. Maybe they don't want to be around 100 or 1,000 other people. I understand all of that. I understand the human nature of this that's happening to people. Most people are still in shock. They can't even believe it. Most people want to hurry up and get back to their house. They want to see for themselves, just like all of you are. You almost want to see it for yourselves. Is that really what happened? Are they really telling us everything that happened? We're telling everything that happened. My message to those folks is, is go to mauicounty.gov, which is the website that we've informed everybody to go to. It's very clear, it's very explicit. You can go to the one closest to where you live if you're up country, or you can come to one in central Maui. We had to close the, two of them in, south, in the west side because one we were, it was temporary, and the other is because the fire came up to it. So we had to re, you know, readjust. Um, I just wanna say one other thing while I'm here because I think this is worth also repeating or saying. We were trying to get visitors out because obviously their vacation has tra changed drastically. They're in, a, they're in a location that doesn't have any power, doesn't have any water, and they're sleeping there. But that's probably better than some of the choices other people had, which was to not have anywhere to go. Um, but we tried to get them to the airport so they could get on flights, so they could get to Honolulu and make a choice to stay there or fly home or go to another island. We're not closing Maui. We're closing the west side of Maui. So there are people that can go to Wailea, there are people that can go to Kihei, people that can stay with family in Wailuku. It's the folks that were in South, that are in West Maui that we were concerned about. Plus, we were hoping we could use those hotel rooms for our residents who could be replaced, who could replace the, the space that our, our, our visitors were taking. So, I mean, that's the best I can guess because I don't know why people stayed there, but I don't think it was for a lack of information. And hopefully today, uh, we, we will be able to release a large volume of pictures and video uh, from this site. And so uh, uh, I want to share very openly, uh, it will shock you how much damage the way things burn to just their base, cars, trucks, buildings. Um, there's no way anyone could uh, stay in that space or be in that space. The lines, all of the infrastructure, it's gone. So we'll share extensive photos and that will help, I think, people understand fully uh, the full scope of the disaster that the mayor and the police chief and the fire chief have had to deal with. Uh, plus, of course, the evacuation of thousands of visitors uh, to find space, either, like it was mentioned earlier, on planes or even to the, con the convention center as was set up. Uh, but it it's a profound change of landscape. Mahalo, I'm going to take you right here. Thank you. Um, I'm Jill Cowan, I'm with the New York Times. Um, I'm, I wanted to ask a little bit more about the evacuation orders. You mentioned, uh, Mayor, mandatory evacuation orders. We've been hearing from residents that uh, some on the west side were told late in, I guess, Tuesday afternoon to shelter in place. Uh, we've also heard that there was no um, emergency warning from early in the morning on, on that Tuesday to the afternoon. So I'm hoping somebody can kind of walk through in as much detail as possible when alerts went out, who they went to, what the thinking was to, to either tell people to shelter in place or to leave if they could. Um, and and yeah, just sort of what the thinking was and if you do things a little differently now or, or, or you know, just sort of what, what the, the timeline was. That's been a source, I think, of, of a little bit of confusion just in our reporting. We've been hearing other things from different folks. I'm going to guess that the person you spoke to was a visitor. We spoke to a lot of people. No, I'm going to talk. No, let me explain. Yeah. Uh, you spoke to a visitor if they were asked to shelter in place. Because okay. all of the hotels were asked to shelter in place. Now, did people want to stay there? No, they wanted to get out. They wanted to get out of Lahaina. And we asked them not to because we were trying to get emergency vehicles into Lahaina and not have this uh, bottleneck. You couldn't get out, if you're familiar with uh, Lahaina, you couldn't get out uh, to go towards the Wailuku or go to the airport. That road was closed. There were 29 poles that fell 
on our roads. 29 of the power poles were down, and they were still energized. So you couldn't go out. So the only other way to go out, if you're familiar with Maui, is Kahakuloa, which is a one-lane highway in most places, which is why that was a bottleneck. So yes, people were asked to stay in their hotels and not leave. The residents were evacuated. Those are the folks that we took out of there. Now, I don't know if the alarm, if I don't know if the alarms went off or if they were burnt, I can't tell you that because I wasn't in Lahaina. Uh, but I'm gonna just confirm that if you're at one of the hotels in Kanapali, because the fires were not there, people were asked to stay there, but people still tried to get out. They didn't want to stay there. They weren't listening to, the, to what we were asking them to do. But I don't know about the alarms, how they weren't. I'll just add. Cell alerts, you know, whatever, yeah. the, whatever the, the different modes were. So our department is not responsible for that. So I'll just speak to what we're responsible for and what we're at. The, the fire that day moved so quickly that from where it started in the brush to where it moved into the neighborhood, um, communications back to those who make those notifications are physically and nearly impossible. Who, who was, I'm so sorry, which department? The emergency is management oh, agency okay. is responsible for that. So we, I don't, because notifications are done localized cell phone towers and such, there could have been some of those that were out like the cell phone service is out right now. But all I can tell you is what we experienced was such a fast moving fire through the neighborhood that the initial neighborhood that caught fire, um, they were basically self evacuating with fairly little notice. Um, and then that's when we anticipate seeing most of our, our people. And then as we get further down to Front Street, it was later in the day, hopefully by then people were more evacuated and multiple notifications went out. I'm just going to remind everybody it's a very devastating time for Maui. Please be gentle with your lines of questions. Um, we welcome them, but just be a little bit gentle. Um, people, everybody up here, I don't believe has slept in the last 48 hours. So we just appreciate your kindness. One last question, and then if you did not get your questions answered, you are free to reach out directly to me. We will follow up. Uh, post this interview with, or this conference rather, with a news release with digital assets that you folks can use. I think you two, I already asked, uh, you gave you a time. Question. Stand by. Go for it. Hi. Um, I'm Chief Chen Johnson with Akaku Maui Community Media. And I think um, any further lines of, of questioning would be sort of silly at this point because I have seen a lot of this footage and a lot of these photographs and we've been airing as much as we can information. And I just want to thank the county, the police department, the fire department and everyone else that has been pitching in to help this effort out because it is horrific. And my heart goes out to all of the people that have suffered way greater than anyone else. Thank you. Chief Omaha for that, but I just want to say uh, we're going to do regular media updates every day at 9 a.m., at noon, and at 3 p.m. We're going to try to use this room unless it's unavailable, in which case we will have to find another location. Radio. Oh, those would be the radios? Okay, sorry. We're going to update you on radio uh, at those times, 9 a.m., noon, and 3 p.m. Is there yeah, I missed the radio can't do part. The video, just out of curiosity. Is there again? I said, is there a reason we can't do it video? There's a lot of people that don't get the radio that are in tune with Maui. I will tell you that the um, what Mayor's talking about is a way to communicate to the public as well for those who do not have internet um, and video access. So 9 a.m., noon, and 3 p.m. on every AM and FM radio station on Maui Island will be uh, public information. Video, uh, we will fit in. It will probably not be three uh, times a day for video, though. So there will be no questions allowed? Um, the public is asking us to provide as much updates and information as possible. We are working uh, to support their needs. Okay. Let me add to that to, to also satisfy. So uh, first of all, mahalo for mm -hmm. your attention on this crisis. Like I said earlier, it's the largest natural disaster that our state has seen. That's becoming evident quite quickly. We will be holding uh, routine press conferences at the state level and at the right times we'll introduce the right people, uh, which is usually going to be several people at the press conferences. Uh, we're going to try to uh, unburden to the greatest extent possible the mayor, chief of police, and the fire chief as they do their job in this acute phase. But of course they always answer questions too. 
Uh, we will be compiling a lot of information and sharing it. There will be chances for all of you to ask questions. Uh, we'll be doing it uh, with FEMA support, with, uh, in many cases, General Harris leadership. Uh, we have our team assembled statewide, which is not unlike the way we approached COVID, which was to share a lot of information. It's just in these first 48 hours, the amount of damage has necessitated a conservative approach because we really don't want those individuals that are in shelters right now uh, to lose all hope. And that's where we are today. But there will be lots of opportunities. Uh, my team will be back here in support of the mayor very frequently, but we'll also hold a lot of press availability on Oahu and we'll zoom people in from the neighbor islands. I think that's fair to say. Okay. But we appreciate you. Uh, we also want to send the message before I go uh, to the mainland and to the world. Please support the people of Maui. There are ways to do it. The Hawaii Community Foundation, for example, has set up a fund. I believe it's called Maui Strong. It's also going through the United Way, the Maui United Way. Millions of dollars have already poured in. But as you can tell, thousands of individuals are going to have great need here in the county. And that's going to go directly to those people. So thank you to everyone for doing what you can. And if you're a local resident, find a way to take someone in from Maui, if at all possible. Because this rebuild is going to be extraordinary, but it's going to take time. So thank you all for today. And that was the mayor, uh, along with other federal and county officials, uh, giving us their latest updates after that group went through what they call a Lahaina that is gone. Um, the governor striking a level and sympathetic tone at the end of that press conference. But I would be remiss not to recognize that there were times in which the officials uh, were presenting extremely on the defensive to questions that the press was trying to get answered and questions to answers that you, the public, have been giving to us. We will continue to try respectfully with the powers that be to bring you the answers that we can get. Some inf new information that we have today, uh, the confirmed death toll being 53. Um, the police chief pointing out that there may be as many as a thousand people missing does not mean that they are deceased. It's just that they have maybe not been in contact yet, have not been able to be confirmed as to where their location is. A grassroots effort under the Maui Fires People Locator has listed about 1,400 plus people as still being in their category as not located again does not mean deceased, but a sobering assessment that the officials brought us in this press conference was that uh, this is, as they call it, hollowed ground. There, there are still remains, people to be extracted. Um, they say um, homes, cars, um, and, and, and then the outdoors in the uh, Lahaina area. They describe it as being um, all gone from Puamana Street to Chart House, from the shore to above the highway. Uh, that if people are asking what is still there, the mayor says nothing, uh, that nothing is there. Um, the governor estimating this in what he's calling it the largest disaster in Hawaii history. Of course, Hawaii has seen so many large disasters from Hurricane Aniki in 1992, still one of the most destructive hurricanes in U.S. history. You could go back as far as the 1946 tsunami that killed 158 people. This is ranking among them. Uh, governor estimating it will take billions and many years to rebuild Lahaina. Again, from the devastation they say they saw today, we still have not been able to get in there ourselves to see. Thank you to all the viewers and to the survivors who have been able to send us their, uh, their direct video they've seen. Uh, we're hoping to get more information uh, ourselves to, to verify. Um, the governor saying it will take days and weeks just to extract remains from the area of the deceased and then at that time is when they anticipate there being more access to the public. Um, they say to the residents who uh, have homes there, had homes there, who are itching to get back in, and they warn there's nothing to go back to and that there's no need to be by the side of the highway waiting for a road to reopen anytime soon. Um, it won't be soon and it won't be uh, anything to go back to, to, to recover uh, in terms of material belongings. Um, the power assessed 
uh, by the governor. He says it may be weeks to months to bring power back into the area of Lahaina, although generators may be able to do the same uh, a little bit sooner once it becomes a livable place again. There may, the governor says, need to be called a special session to see how and how much of the, um, he says about $1.5 billion in the rainy day fund at this point could be allocated toward this disaster. Back in the Kauai floods of several years ago, about $100 million was uh, was fairly swiftly appointed to the Kauai community uh, through legislative action to help them there. So much new information to dissect. We have our crews on on island with those officials right now, boiling all of that down. We'll continue to do so here throughout all of our coverage this evening on the KH12 News. And we will continue to respectfully push for more direct access and for more direct answers to the questions that you all have and you entrust us to ask. Thank you for joining us and continue to stay tuned to KH12 and KHI for your news.